Hi, I'm back uh, this time with a late mission and I have been planning this for a really really long time. I had to redesign this uh, lander uh, three times, uh, or designed it three times and uh, the ascent uh, return vehicle nine times until I get it right, so it was really problematic. It has uh, 666 parts upon liftoff and out of that around 400 uh, is uh, for the return vehicle only. And this uh, makes it uh, quite laggy, so a lot of parts uh, uh, hard to fly it. Uh, but it uh, really works well, uh, as you can see. Finally, it's in orbit. And uh, I had to modify uh, the KSP uh, settings config uh, to get this red line here, what is visible. Uh, it's uh, done so that uh, there is a patch conic limit and I raised it from 3 to 5 and this way I can see more uh, into the future, farther into the future. Uh, previously that red line didn't appear so I didn't uh, uh, have information uh, for several maneuvers that I needed to. Uh, and what uh, can I do with that? Uh, this is not that useful case but uh, uh, just soon we will see uh, that uh, I can uh, do a gravity assisted capture uh, with one of the moons of uh, Joule, which was previously not possible because I didn't see uh, what my resulting orbit will be, whether it's a capturing orbit or not, or what uh, parameters it has. Uh, and I chose it so that I uh, uh, started in the same plane uh, uh, as Joule, so that's why I had to paint this, paint this uh, uh, Delta V uh, for the plane change very close to Kerbin. It was uh, relatively uh, a lot, uh, 20, uh, 250 or 270 meters per second. But after that, a very little change made it possible uh, that uh, I can encounter with any of the moons of uh, Joule. And uh, with the red line, I can see that uh, it's a capturing orbit, and I chose uh, uh, a late because I was going there, so it. Uh, I was hoping it uh, makes an orbit that's closer to it's original, so less maneuvering is required after the capture. Uh, now, it has to be done uh, very far away, because when the ship is already in the Joule uh, system, it's, it's too late. Uh, then the moons are either in, in, in the right position or not, and if not, uh, then it's not possible to do it anymore. So. Uh, the thing is, uh, we have to uh, vary or change the arrival time when en route, and that has to. It, it's the easiest uh, to to do uh, very far away. So here I just uh, do some final uh, correction, uh, just for the inclination, so that uh, later will correct uh, it uh, after this uh, uh, small burn. And. After this, I just have to wait uh, until uh, late uh, comes to me, or I go to late. You can see a tidal far in the distance, and uh, uh, does its job. It was a very close uh, flyby. I chose it so that it was just 54 kilometers. Uh, so uh, this was the resulting orbit, uh, almost in plane. In the three inner moons, uh, so I just need a very little change. Uh, so that I have uh, again an encounter with uh, late, and I had to wait for another enc encounter because most of the data we change happened after I passed uh, late, so that it, uh, its gravity pulled me back. Uh, that's what uh, slowed me down. So uh, that's the reason. So the next encounter I can capture, and this uh, uh, this vehicle doesn't have uh, any heat shield, and uh, it's not really suitable for uh, aero capture. That means I have to spend fuel to capture on late, uh, but everything else was free. So uh, the whole capture on Joule and the, the decreasing of the orbit uh, happened free by late. So it's it's okay this way. And uh, there was a little fuel remaining uh, after this capture in the booster stage. Uh, so I decided to drop it uh, on late, and this was the the up point to do so a very high orbit. Just a little bit of that of uh, that we made uh, made it so that I have an intersecting orbit. With the remaining uh, engines, uh, I have a delta v, uh, 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 ratio of uh, around uh, 
0.4, but I still have uh, more than 1,000 delta V, uh, and it's enough to finish the uh, here the plane change and the circularization, uh, so that I have a completely circular 61 kilometer orbit uh, on the equator uh, of late. And I needed that precise orbit because of two reasons. Uh, one is that 60 above 60, I can have a higher time acceleration because I need to wait. Uh, for my target to get uh, on the day side. And the other is that I practiced the uh, uh, landing from this altitude, and it's it's needed. Uh, this practice was needed, and this uh, precision was needed because uh, we can see that I put the periapsis between those two islands, and this way I can reach my uh, target island, uh, just uh, which is uh, just uh, past the terminator, so it's in the morning now. And we are seeing, seeing it now. This rotation uh, is intentional, so it doesn't have any engines. We can see Tylo and the uh, wall uh, ozolate, which is very close now uh, from the window. So this rotation is needed because this distributes heat and also creates a lot of drag, as we can see. So uh, this is what makes it stop in time. And even turn off the SAS uh, for a while so that I can spin faster. It, this vehicle has really very little control over uh, the landing point. Here we can see that I turn back towards the land so that I don't land uh, in the water. And you know, even trying uh, to turn around for the ascent uh, stage to face uh, eastwards uh, wasn't completely, com completed completely. But uh, it helped a little. So there's a flag. So because of this uh, uh, hard landing, I, I wanted to employ planes for this. Uh, uh, here I can collect the ore uh, and a few other tanks. Uh, and I wanted to uh, use planes uh, to land, um, but even though they made it possible to change uh, uh, in the atmosphere where I land, uh, they made it harder to land, so I just finally uh, chose this uh, lander. And here I took the submarine out uh, towards the shore, very carefully, very slowly. And as I was going forward, uh, I was very careful of these uh, polygonal edges uh, on the ground. But the last one, just 200 meters from the water, uh, the brakes were not working. So I lost uh, one of the intakes and uh, a ballast tank, uh, so I had to reload it. Uh, and that's, this was the only reload in this whole mission, but this time it was too, too far into uh, revert and start again. So, uh, yeah, I had to take uh, the submarine again. And uh, less carefully, because uh, I was pressed for time, uh, I progressed uh, for the water again. Nothing happened this time, so why didn't it happen previously? I don't know. But uh, it was successful uh, in reaching the water. And this was my goal uh, all along, uh, to take the submarine uh, to the oceans of late. And late uh, has, uh, has peculiar, peculiar oceans. This submarine, when fully fueled, uh, floats uh, just very barely uh, on Caribbean. But here in late, it sinks, even when uh, the fuel tanks are half empty. Uh, and also, the oceans are a lot deeper than on Caribbean. You can go around 1,300 meters on Caribbean, but here I can. Uh, go deeper than two kilometers. Unfortunately, there is this one kilometer deep uh, bug where uh, everything turns blue uh, when the camera is deeper than one kilometer. So I have to keep it above one, uh, one kilometer depth. Uh, that means that the submarine is going farther and farther away, which uh, means uh, it is harder to control it more precisely. I was using the size of the lights uh, to see how deep, uh, how, how close I am to the ocean floor because uh, uh, the radar altimeter is showing the distance from uh, the ocean surface, not uh, from the uh, ocean floor. And here I stopped because I reached two kilometers and I was waiting for a vertical speed indicator to change uh, there. And just when I was uh, giving up, it finally changed to a smaller uh, volume and a small horizontal volume appeared, which means that it was creeping along the uh, ocean floor. So I could return after this because this was the goal to reach two kilometers on late. Uh, and just after a few uh, uh, maneuvers uh, for fun, uh, I was going straight back uh, to the lander. 
And strangely enough, uh, the fuel was consumed a lot faster than on the way here. I don't know why, but it, it still had enough fuel to make it uh, back to the lander completely uh, on the shore, provided I don't mess up anything. And I was really close here. And uh, when, I was, when I was just really close, I shut down engine and uh, waited uh, it to uh, slowly drift uh, there. And it was slower than 5 kilometers per second, so nothing should have happened. Yet one of the intakes exploded. And the problem with this is that I lost one engine uh, because of this. And there is no way the submarine can make it uh, uh, back to the lander uh, through this uh, steep uh, shoreline uh, with three engines. So, unfortunately, I had to take uh, four carballs and uh, go there on foot. And this was always a backup that if something happens with the submarine, uh, it just have to take me down and take me to the shore again. And after that, anything can happen to it. It doesn't really matter. And it took uh, me so long that you can see the uh, sun moving there uh, that it uh, finally became dark on late and it took me an hour or so, fortunately. By pressing shift and forward with one hand, I still had the one hand free and I could browse the net through my phone, so it wasn't that bad. And yes, after all four were back, I checked the time and I knew that this time was ideal to start back because how the position of late was. So I wasted no time and blasted off. Here we can see that the solid fuel rockets erect uh, uh, the return stage. They actually exploded the uh, uh, cargo bay around uh, uh, this uh, return uh, stage, which makes it easier to fly up. And it sheds two uh, fuel tanks uh, in the uh, process. And finally it makes it uh, to orbit and uh, discards this uh, vector engine. Uh, so the opposition was that uh, late was moving backwards uh, uh, compared, compared to the orbit uh, of Joule, so it helped me to uh, decelerate or uh, or help me in my uh, my injection bird towards Kerbin. Uh, in this case, and the single terrier uh, finally moves it back. How the thing works? There is a um, yeah. What happened here that I could use uh, uh, the red line again uh, for uh, a direct injection from late without the uh, increased patch connect limits uh, it, it is not possible so that's just the final setting so uh, how how it works that there is a hidden probe core and a battery and uh, uh, reaction wheel uh, inside that uh, cabin and that uh, makes it possible to to uh, use it as a ship instead of just drifting uh, debris and uh, yeah, I have to wait uh, until I get there. But the peculiarity of this cabin is that after it, it, it uh, detaches the, those two fuel tanks uh, on the forward and the back side uh, with the engines, it's just this cabin remaining uh, with the probe core inside. If the angle of attack is correct, it develops a very huge drag, which makes it possible that uh, it can re-entry uh, from a dual mission directly without heat shield. It can survive 4,900 meters per second uh, uh, with 25 kilometers uh, periapsis, as, as we see here. And I was using up the remaining fuel to make it more slower. Uh, it can even survive for 5,000, uh, but then it needs 30 kilometers, and then it's an arrow capture, and then uh, a second uh, uh, after orbit uh, later uh, a re-entry which will take it down so here yeah we can see the huge drag and a small lift as a real capsule would have and uh, our uh, guys uh, survived the trip back so that was it thanks for watching bye